What's up everyone, this is Sam Magushi and welcome to the channel. In this video, we're going to be stacking as many damage buffs as possible, so you guys can do the most amount of damage in the game. So we'll be going over all the different ways that you can get these damage buffs, as well as the gear and mods you should be using. If you guys find this video helpful, please drop a like and check out our playlist, where we break down a lot of mechanics in Dying Light 2 just like this video, showcase some builds and create some guides on the most efficient way to grind for XP. All this footage that you see is on hard difficulty, but if you are playing on a lower difficulty, just know that you'll be doing even more damage. So to start things off, let's look at the different ways that we can get these damage boosts. So first, let's talk about the most important part, and probably the most OP thing in the game, is the mod Rage Booster. Rage Booster is a consumable and will increase your melee damage by 100%. I found a rage booster randomly in the world, but you can also get a blueprint of the rage booster in the side quest for Aider. Now it's not the melee damage that makes this consumable OP, but the secondary perk where it says it will increase your resistance. It really doesn't give you a percentage, but after testing on hard, you take almost no damage. We'll probably do a video going more in depth into this, but just keep in mind that the rage booster is essential to this build. The next consumable that we'll be using is the Muscle Booster. You can find this at the Fish Eye Craftmaster, and when fully upgraded, it will increase your melee damage by 50%. Definitely not as much as the Rage Booster, but these effects do stack, and more damage the better. Second thing is our gear. Now the main thing you want to be looking for are the stat boosts on the gear. The level or the armor of the gear doesn't really matter as that's only beneficial to your defense. However, since we're focusing on offense, the one stat that we absolutely need is the one that buffs our weapon. You can go two different routes on this one depending on what kind of weapon you're using. There's one stat that increases your one-handed damage and another that increases your two-handed damage. So depending on which weapon is your strongest, you might want to be boosting one or the other. In this case, I had a one-handed axe which was my strongest weapon, so I have an increase to damage with one-handed weapons on each piece of gear. The stats aren't perfect, so I only have an increase of 54%, so there is still room to min-max this build. Next, let's look at the weapon that we're using. In this case, the level of your weapon does matter, as the higher your weapon is, the more damage it'll do. So if you can, try to get max level gear at 9. If you guys want to know an easy way to get level 9 weapons, check out our legendary farm video, which you can do super early on into the game, which already drops level 9 gear. Once you have your level 9 weapon, the next thing you want to worry about is the mods that you're equipping. By far the best mod combination is a fling and spark crit mod. Spark does the most damage per second, and the fling mod does damage immediately every time the crit mod procs. Finally, I wanted to emphasize that it has to be a crit mod, as you really want the highest percent chance for these crit mods to proc. If you want a more in-depth explanation on why these crit mod combinations are the best, check out Sam's video, all dedicated to these specific mods. Finally, for a grip mod, we definitely want the empowerment mod just to increase our base damage. Something to keep in mind is that you really do want to equip these mods when they're at max level, because with each maxed out mod, you'll get an increased base damage bonus of 16%. The next thing we want to look at is the stats on our weapon. Now depending on the stats that we have on our weapon, it will influence the playstyle that we're using so we can get the most amount of damage. The stat rolls that we get on our weapons are random, so you really have to farm to try to find the best combination. But the main stats that you want to be looking for are an increase to damage at day or night, damage versus humans or infected, and power attack damage. A couple of notable mentions are full health damage bonus and stamina regeneration on light or power attacks as it will keep your stamina up so you can attack more often. Finally, let's hop into some gameplay and show off all of these buffs in action. I want to preface this by saying that by no means is this crazy overpowered, and you really can't one-shot higher level enemies, mostly because of the massive amount of health that they have. In this clip, I threw down a lot of max level mines, each doing 2500 damage each, and it only did around 10th of his health. So I'm pretty sure high level goons have around maybe 500k health. So like I said before, depending on the stat rolls that you have, it will influence the way that you play. So in this case, since my axe had an increase to power attack damage, I am trying to use as many power attacks as possible so I can maximize my damage. So right before you get into a big fight, remember to pop those consumables so you can get that 150% increase to melee damage. 
So as you can notice, the major downside of using the Rage Booster is that it does leave you quite disoriented. The screen becomes very, very blurry, and it might make it a little bit harder to read enemy attacks. However, I'd say because of the massive amount of resistance that it provides, as well as the 100% increase to melee damage, it really leaves the damage that you take quite irrelevant and makes fights a lot easier. With that, I hope you guys learned something in this video. And if you guys found even more ways to increase your damage, let us know in the comment section down below so we could all learn how to get even more damage. Thanks everyone for watching and hope to catch you in the next one.